Good afternoon, everyone. The Sierra Culata National Park, Venezuela, snow again. Covering the peaks in the mountain range here, you can see on the map some glacial retreat from 1910 and 1960s, not CO2. You might remember Pico Bolivar in April had unusual snows as well. Same mountain range. Interestingly, I was calling because of the early April snows that this area would in fact start snowing again because throughout history, when a grand solar minimum intensifies, this area expands its glaciers. The map of South America, anywhere there's a yellow star, extreme cold or snow event over the last two months. Sunspots are dropping off a cliff. Add on top of this southern hemisphere ozone hole, longest it's ever been to the onset of that, coupled with the latest start to the typhoon season in the western Pacific. Gee, I wonder if those two are related. A glimpse here at the Sierra Culata National Park snow cover that just fell, unexpected for sure. As the headline claims, it's the most ever seen. That's a huge statement to put into a news report. Imagine camping up there and then this type of snow rolls in on you unexpectedly. Red triangle on the map, the location of the snowfall. This is in the Andes of Venezuela. This is a comparison of the areas covered by glaciers from 1910 on the periphery to what it melted to in 1962. I can't call CO2 melting, this is a natural cycle. Pico Bolivar, this is the same exact mountain range. It snowed in April, which is the summer, and it is completely rare down there for that to happen at all. Two snowfalls in this mountain range. Images for you here from the April snows. Looking pretty similar in the depth, but what's unusual is Pico Bolivar, that same area in the grand solar minimum highlighted here on the map, actually increased in glacial cover during every grand solar minimum. What seems to happen is the intertropical convergence zone gets pushed and more moisture comes down on top of that mountain range as well as the temperatures drop. Generally, it's a 20% increase in moisture and a 1.5 to a 3 degree C drop in temperatures. This is Pico Bolivar area. Again, you'll see the early melting in the beginning of the century. It's just a natural cycle that's occurring. These are the mountain ranges on a topographical map. Anywhere that you see the yellow stars, this year has been a cold or snow event. And then looking back at another reconstruction of temperature in South America, going back 1,200 years. Keep in mind, I'm going to compare something with you here. The areas in the dips in temperature around 1180 AD, around 1400 AD, and around 1650. We jump over to the collapse of the Chinese dynasties overlaid on the Greenland ice cores, and you'll see the exact dips and the exact temperature. Correlation between the collapse of the Chinese dynasties and the temperature dips in Venezuela. Lake sediment cores show the same exact findings with moisture and temperature dropping. It's going to happen again starting right now, and this is your first factor. Personally can't believe it happened so quick when I reported on this news story over a month ago saying that look for this particular place when the snows are going to come back to verify the solar minimum's beginning, and then it just snowed two months after I did that report. Wow, it's already here. A lot of information about temperature drops and moisture through South America. Another chart I pulled here shows you the exact location, which country, and what to expect with that climate change. Sunspots, the natural cycle as well, driving this grand solar minimum, dropping off of a cliff. The only person who even was close to forecasting this correctly was John Casey. He's been correctly predicting what's gonna happen, and his prediction through Solar Cycle 25 is 25 sunspots or less, which puts us into something in the 1600s. 10.7 centimeter flux, also showing the exact same drop off. If you're looking for other strange anomalies, the latest onset for the ozone hole area in the Southern Hemisphere, this was off the NASA article talking about how it's regenerating itself. And then also the latest start ever recorded to the Western Pacific typhoon season. And I wonder if they're connected at all with Typhoon Napartak. 199 days from the last season's typhoon until this year's typhoon. Temperatures dropping, the second most ever recorded in the satellite era. 
RSS shows the same drop. University of Huntsville, Alabama shows the same drop. We're going into the La Nina, which is going to be intense and very deep. Ocean temperatures dropping off the most ever recorded. You can see we're going to get into the coldest part of the La Nina coming up in the latter half of the year into the first part of 2017. But if it follows anything like it did in the 1970s, look around the world what's happening already with La Nina. Southeast Asia wetter, West Africa wetter, Australia wetter with their massive second 100 year storm coming in two months right now. Thanks for watching. The signs truly are around us. You need to open your eyes now and take a concerted look that what we've been told about CO2 now no longer fits the model. It's time to change. Science changes with new information.